Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hobby Lodge. A bit of a different video today, as you can see on the screen. I'm down in the corner here because uh, I want to show you something way more important on the desk in front of me. And that is how I've been restoring both old and new tapes for the Commodore 64. Uh, these tapes in some cases are 30 plus years old and they're failing for whatever reasons they're failing or maybe they weren't written well in the first place as a new product. Uh, but even new companies today that are producing tapes have their issues and I think there's a way that we can we can restore those tapes without having to go the process of sending them back and forth to each other trying to work out where the problems lie. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to take you through my process today. There are a number of ways of doing this I've seen on the internet. I've I've tried pretty much all of them uh, and this is the one I found worked the best so let's let's jump into it shall we so essentially this is the magic ingredient uh, this is the 1530 USB adapter that allows you to plug your Commodore 64 data set in and then to your PC or laptop or Mac there's no reason why this wouldn't work on a Mac as well um, I've only ever tried it on PC so uh, who knows but uh, I don't imagine why it wouldn't work the programs are very similar so uh, yes um, this is about 12 pounds on eBay I'll stick a link below to where I got mine um, but I'm sure if you search it up on eBay you'll find lots of references for it don't go paying silly money for it though it was about 12 to 13 pounds Plus a bit of shipping, I believe, which I think is very reasonable um, for what it allows you to do. So, yes, so the initial problem is you have tapes such as this one here, Saint Dragon. Uh, this doesn't load for me. It has never loaded since the day I got it. Um, but it is a super old cassette, right? You know, it is from the Kix collection. As you know, I am collecting the Hit Squad games, uh, and this may be the second collection I go after. I haven't yet decided, but uh, I would love to get this one back working again because it's actually a great uh, little game. Uh, but unfortunately, it just doesn't load. And then there's games like this. Millie and Molly, which is actually a brand new game um, from recent years, uh, released by Bitmap Soft. And this game, again, maybe loads one out of every 20 times I try the tape. Uh, and I know it's not my tape deck because I've had that checked out. And this loads every game I own, no problems whatsoever. So just occasionally, you're going to find products that just don't quite work. And I think rather than going through some returns process or buying another copy of a tape, I believe they can be restored ourselves uh, using devices such as this. So let's talk through the process because I do believe it is very simple. First off, you're going to connect your data set to your PC. So you simply plug in the lead on the end here, nice and easy, and you take this and plug it into a USB port on your PC. I just happen to be using this extender cable for ease of use. But it doesn't matter. It also doesn't matter if you plug it into USB 2 or 3.0. It just works. So we'll put it to one side. And you can hear the tape deck has fired up. You can hear that electrical hum. Um, so that means it's getting power over the USB. Uh, yeah, so let's jump to the desktop. And I can talk you through what else you need. I'm going to minimize this up a little bit. Still want you to see what I'm doing with the tape deck here. Uh, because I think it is important. And if you didn't want to do this on um, actual tapes, uh, a couple of little tips for you that I've been using to test is I had this magazine tape here that I covered over the right protection and was testing on this, you know, loading games on, seeing if it worked. So that gave me confidence I could do it. Uh, but you could also go out and buy new tapes. They are still making these. They are available from you know, local stores and places like Amazon, of course. Um, you can go and buy new tapes that already have the right protection um, disabled on them, so you can immediately write to them. Uh, for those people that maybe don't know, and I'm not going to teach anyone to suck eggs here, but um, when you get a tape, you will find these two holes on the top, and this is what the right protection is. So with those two holes there, you're unable to write any data to that tape. So you cover it over with a piece of tape, whatever you want to stick in there to block the holes. You can see I've done it here to this one so that I can actually write over the tape. You can see there, I've just used some labels to uh, just stick over the top, a bit hard to see on the camera, um, but that's all I've done there. So yeah, on the actual machine, you need two things. You need a tape file, of course. This is the internet. Search for your game, search for tape file, and you will find many of them out there. So download your tape files, stick them in a folder or something so you have them ready to go. Uh, and then you also need a program called Audio Tap. Now, Audio Tap, I will stick a link below so you can go and get that. It's a free program. Um, 
just download it, unzip it, and then run the application directly from the folder you just unzipped. There is no install process. It is very simple. I've stuck them on my desktop here just for ease of use. You don't need to run them on your desktop. You can run them wherever you please. Um, but you simply open up the audio tap program. You'll have a bunch of files in here, but there is only one executable and that is audio tap itself. So when you run that, you get a very, very simple interface as you can see right here. Uh, and this allows you to go in both directions. So you can take a tap file and run it to tape, or you can take a tape and run it to a tap file. So if you wanted to, you could back up, maybe you've got some precious tapes that you'd rather not use, but you wanna still run them on emulator or whatever, you could, you could back them up essentially and play them on an emulator. I mean, I would say it's probably just easiest to go and download the file, but you never know. You might have some tapes that someone doesn't have a have a copy of um, for you to be able to download the tap file directly, and you can create them from here. But we're not doing that. Obviously, we're going to be restoring to tape because we like physical media in the Hobby Lodge, and I want to keep playing with these tapes. So I'm going to be doing side B today of Saint Dragon. I've already done side A, um, but this game is a two side loader so when you load up side a um, it immediately says to you flip the tape over we wanted to start and press play so we've already done side a so i'm going to take you through how i go about doing side b so we'll open this up now i have already rewound this to side b you can see all of the tape there uh, one thing i'm going to show you is that when you press ok on the tape file you're about to load it will immediately start loading. Now, if you know anything about these tapes, you know that at the beginning of these tapes, there's actually some blank. You know, there's maybe five or six seconds of blank tape before the program actually kicks in. And you can tell that because when you put a pencil, the old pencil in here trick, and wind the tape forward a little bit, you'll see the tape go from this clear tape to eventually the brown tape. There we go. So that's when we know there is data that can be written to this tape. So we don't want the tape right at the very beginning because when I press OK, the program's going to try and record to non-existent tape. So we want this about in the middle. So we're going to go past the white little strip there, but put it about there. And that means when I press play record on here, by the time I press OK on the screen, we'll have data tape available to be written to. So we're just going to put it in the tape deck. Nice and simple. We're going to click OK on here. So convert from a tap file to a sound file. So the PC is actually going to play the sound. The tape data set is going to pick up that sound and record it. Um, one little tip for you, if this fails for whatever reason, just check your sound card is showing as that USB device. Essentially, that little dongle that I've just showed you here is a sound card for the tape deck. So if this is on anything else, like maybe it's connected to your surround sound or your speakers or your other, any other sound card you've got, um, you might find that it doesn't load um, because it's output into the wrong device. Or you get a horrific noise through your speakers, so you definitely know you've got it connected to the wrong device. So make sure this is showing as USB PNP sound device or something similar on your PC. It might get detected as something slightly different, but ultimately a USB sound card is what you want that to be showing as. So uh, yeah, if it's not working, check that. Um, if it's still not working, check your tape. Have you removed the uh, or, or blocked the set the the right protection on the tape? Have you fully rewound it? Have you sort of forwarded it to the right position on the tape? Uh, so click OK here. We're going to get asked for a file. Uh, so wherever you've put your tap files, again, I've put them on the desktop for ease of use here, um, but there may be any downloads or wherever you've put them, uh, and then pick your file. So obviously I've done side A already, so we're going to do side B. Now the moment I click open it will start. So I need to stop at this point and get ready with my play record on the, tape, the data set itself. So I'm gonna hit play record and then I'm gonna hit open on this screen, okay? So we're gonna go there, there. Okay, just that little quick operation. And you can see straight away, I don't know if you can see, but the red light on my data set has lit up, uh, the save um, light on there, which means it's now starting to play that sound and it's starting to capture it 
to the tape. And you can see here, we have a nice little progress bar telling us how far along in the tape we are. Now, I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch all of this. So through the magic of editing, I'll be back in a moment when this is finished. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump back in at the end here. As you can see, the tape is almost finished. But the reason why I wanted to jump back in is because this program doesn't really gracefully exit. It will just end. And when it just ends, the tape will continue recording. So you do want to not keep an eye on it because ultimately your tape will just run out eventually. Um, but as you can see now, when this program finishes, which is about to do any second, um, you can press stop on the tape. So as you can see, it's finished, but the tape is still recording. It's essentially recording nothing. It's recording blank sound. So you could let it run all the way to the end just to make sure the end of the tape has got no data on it, or you can come up to it and obviously press stop because you've now reached the end of the program. Um, another little point I thought I'd make at this point is that whilst this is happening, whilst that tape file is being played and recorded by your tape deck, don't be doing anything else with the PC because if you go off and watch a YouTube video or you play a game or you do whatever, anything that creates sound will be creating sound through this and will be recorded to this. Uh, so rather than having your tape file, um, you're gonna have your tape file mingled uh, with your favorite Hobby Lodge video, for instance, I don't know. So uh, yeah, just make sure you're not using your PC whilst that tape's loading because that sound will get transmitted to the tape deck. But there we go, we have now written uh, side B of this game. So we can pop this out we can go over to the commodore 64 and we can load it and see if we were successful or not and if we were then we can come back and do others so one that i need to do is million molly here um, but essentially that is the process uh, and i will quickly just cover any points at the end um, but yeah we have written a new old tape i guess uh, let's go and test it okay so we've put the tape in we've hit the load let's see if we get a uh, game found There we go, it's found St. Dragon. And I'll come back in a sec and I'll show you if the game actually loaded. Things are looking positive so far, but this is not the end, so we'll keep going. Things are still pretty positive, but we're not there yet. And there we have it. It has fully loaded both A and B sides. Um, so we have recovered our copy of St. Dragon on the Kicks label. And it's working perfectly. So yeah, uh, that is how it's done. Um, I will just leave you to it and give any questions, please ask below. But uh, hopefully it was fairly straightforward and you have learned how you can potentially recover old or new tapes uh, back to physical media so you can play them in your Commodore 64 at your leisure. But yeah, I'm really happy this works because there's definitely some tapes I need to do it on. But thanks for watching. Bye bye.